Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. In this Kotlin tutorial, we're going to be migrating across to Jetpack's new navigation component and showing you how to do that. Here we've got my website. There is a prerequisite for this. You do need to be using Android Studio 3.2 or later. Um, currently, I'm using the Canary version of Android Studio because Android Studio 3.2 has not yet been officially released. Okay, and I will put the code details up in GitHub once the uh, tutorial has been um, published and released. And we'll pop across to the first step here, which is you need to install the dependencies for the navigation fragment component as detailed here. So what I'm going to do is just quickly drop across to the Google website here. And for the architectural components, you've got the new navigation component here. I'm just going to drop on down to implement navigation and it goes through the details of implementing the, nav the um, navigation. But the first step here is adding components to your project. So if we click on this tab here and here's the details here. So we do need to provide it with the definition of nav version. So I'm just going to copy that now. Now we'll jump across into our Android Studio project. And as I mentioned, I'm using 3.2. This is the Canary version if I go to Android about. So I am using Canary 17 for the moment, but I will push migrate across to the official release of Android Studio once it's released. But you can follow this tutorial in the Canary version if, you, if you're doing this tutorial at an earlier stage before Android Studio 3.2 has been released. Okay, so we do need to open up our Gradle build file. I'm going to click on the module one here. And probably at the top of dependencies, we'll put in that, define that. And we also need to go back across to Android Studio. And we need to copy these two lines here back into our Android Studio and I'll put these at the bottom and just paste those in there. Okay, and before we sync that, note how you got to use the uh, uh, hyphen KTX for Kotlin and this is a Kotlin tutorial so we'll add the KTX here and add the KTX here. Okay, now we'll do a resync of the project. So just click select sync now. Now we're going to add our navigation graph. So that's a graph where you can add your destinations to it. It's a visual editor. So I'm just going to open up my app, go into resources. So on the resource file here, right click, select new, select Android resource file. Let me drag that across into the main box there. Okay, for the file name, I'm just going to call this nav underscore graph. Make sure I get the spelling right. And now this is important. For the resource type, select that. We're going to select navigation. And this is only available to you on Android 3.2 or later. So let's select that navigation. And then we can select OK. OK, so I've got the text version. So down here, you'll see the tab, the text version for our navigation graph. But we need to select on the design tab. OK, so it's currently empty. It's got nothing in here. But you notice it's got the plus sign to add a destination. So for reference there, if you've been following this tutorial series, we'll click on, let me open up the folder there. You'll notice that we've got two fragments here. So those are going to be our destinations. So we're going to add those to our navigation graph. So we're going to, I'm just clicking on this add a destination here. And it gives us three destinations. We only want to add the fragments. This is this tends to be the normal process. So moving forward to Android Studio, you only ever, you only ever really need or want to have one activity, but you can have any number of fragments, which will be your destinations. So we're going to add these two here. So we'll add the fragment view one, and then we'll go across, select the plus sign there, and add the video intent. And move them out of the way of each other. 
And so I've got the two fragments here. That's all fine and good. Just let me enlarge in here. And if we look to the right here, you'll see that it gives us the ID, the label, and you've got a number of other features here you can provide to that as well. And if we just click on the text tab, you can see that it's created our navigation layout for us with the two fragments inside here. Okay, let's go back to the design tab. Okay, so what we want to do is you can see here, we've got the video intent fragment, which has got two buttons. And it's the play button here that wants to switch across to this video view fragment here. So what I'm going to do is just drag this next to this one here. I might just move these up here. And we can create a connection between one destination and another one. And as you can see, this box is now lighting up and just release it. And so we've now created an action. And what this action does is it's going to move across from this destination to this destination. Quite straightforward. So if we look inside here, we've now got the um, action inside our video intent fragment. I will highlight this here. So the action with an ID name and the destination as well. So that's now been set up for us. And as you can see, if you're creating a number of fragments, you want to switch between them. This is a very flexible and easy way of allowing you to switch across to various different destinations. One other thing I want to point out here, as we look here, you'll see that there's the start next to the video view fragment. So we'll click on that fragment there. And as you can see, um, it's got the set default start destination. What this means here is, I'll increase the size of the screen here. What this means here is when you start the application, it decides the first fragment to start on application startup. So we're selecting this fragment to start straight away. So you don't need to put in any code to start a fragment. This is where you'll do that. And if you notice for the video intent fragment, we can change that to the start destination. You can only have one start destination. So you can do this is a matter of selecting this button here. But I want to actually, I do want to change that. So I want the video intent fragment to start first. So I'm going to select that start destination there. So we're now going to ensure that the video intent fragment starts up, which is the behavior that we want. OK, now we're going to add a, a nav host to our main layout file. So I open up the project again. And we're going to go into the resource layout and select the um, main activity resource file here. OK, so we're going to need to add the actual navigation host. It's going to be an empty view, which is where we basically switch between our destinations, our fragments. So we'll create that view. I'm going to use, uh, it's going to be a fragment view. You can select match parents for both of those and select a closing tag. OK, we'll give this an ID. And the ID for it, I'll just call this the nav host fragment. Okay, we need to fill in the name as well. Then this is not auto completing just yet. So it's going to be Android X. So that's where all the future components are going to be uh, put to Android X. And then you need to type navigation and you do need to get the spelling right for this run. Fragment. And then this will be nav host fragment and the next step here is to add the navigation graph and it's the nav graph and we do need to address it under navigation which is the navigation here and it's the name you do need to get the name right so it's nav underscore graph there and finally we do need to set the default navigation host so default nav host and it's just a matter of setting of providing with the flag equals true okay so we've now added a basically an empty view just for populating our destinations with 
Right, we do need to change the tags. So we need to change Android to app for the nav graph and do the same thing for the default nav host. Okay, and finally, we don't need the frame layout anymore because our navigation tag is now doing the job of what the old frame layout is. So this fragment view replaces the frame layout. So let's remove the frame layout. Okay, those should be the only changes we need to make to our main layout file. Let's move across to our main activity here. Okay, so we can move a bunch of stuff. I don't no longer need these companion objects, or actually I'll keep the companion object there, but we can delete the video intent flag because we aren't going to be using the uh, the fragment manager anymore, the support fragment manager anymore, and so we don't need to do any more fragment transactions because the navigation component now replaces that. So we can delete this replace fragment function And we don't need to load a fragment using a fragment, so we can delete these two lines here. And so if we look at this code here, it's basically we've just got the onCreate function set up. We haven't made any other changes. And some of you might be saying, oh, but how do we know which fragment to load? So if we go back to our navigation graph here, Remember how we could select which fragment has a set start destination? That That is where we specify which fragment gets loaded. And so we specified here the start destination for our video intent fragment. So this fragment is going to be loaded, but we don't need to worry about putting the code in our main activity. So go back to the main activity. So this can just stay as it is. We've already used the uh, navigation host controller to decide which fragment gets loaded. Okay, so finally, we do need to touch up our video intent fragment. So go into that file. And inside the video intent fragment, it's the play button here. So the play button here is where we do a fragment transaction. But we no longer need to do fragment transactions. So we can delete this method here. And we don't need this line here. So what we can do is, and I can remove this comment as well. So what we can do here is we want to switch across to another fragment. So to do that, we can just call our view by calling it. Then we'll call find navigation controller. And then call navigate. Okay, and this navigate, we don't... We don't need to provide it the uh, ID of the actual navigation view. We can provide it the ID of the action. Let me show you what I mean. So if we go back to our navigation graph here. So in the old days, we'd call our view. But what we want to do is actually call our action here. So this action specifies what actually happens. And so we want to provide it with the action as the proper way. And so we can provide it with this action ID here. So we'll just copy and paste that. Go back into our video intent fragment. So we need to call the resource ID and we can just paste that in there. Okay, so this is now going to switch across to our destination fragment using the action. So this is the proper mechanism that you want to do. Okay, there's just one more final thing we want to do here, and that is just to override the uh, back back button. So go back into the main activity, and you can over there is an override method for this, and it's called on support navigate up. So we just want to override that. And so what I'm going to do here is replace this default setup here, just with the Kotlin notation. So we need to call find navigation controller. This is to get our navigation controller. And now we'll pass in our view. And so this is going to be the view of our main um, activity, the main, um, the main layout file. And so this will be nav host fragment. And finally, we need to just call it navigation up just to override the back button. 
Okay, so those should be the only changes now. So what I'm going to do here is drag across my emulator. So we're going to run this on emulator and um, just select run. Oh, the application's now started. So we want to record something. So I'm going to select the record button. And I'm just going to, this is just running off the emulator. I'm just going to select record just to get this shaky old bitmap blocks. Select close, accept that. Now we're back to our main intent fragment. Let's select play. And as you can see, we're now switching across to our fragments quite successfully. I'll press black down the button there. We're switching across to our fragments quite successfully new, using the new Jetpack navigation component. And that completes this Kotlin tutorial where we've migrated our application across using to the new Jetpack navigation component. Uh, it's actually quite a straightforward process. You need to install the uh, Jetpack navigation components first via your Gradle files. And then it's a, just a matter of creating a navigation graph in your resource files. Then you can add your destinations and think of your destinations as fragments themselves. Once you've populated your fragments, you can decide um, you can set up action bars or action arrows to select which destination you want to go from where to where in your fragments. And then after that, it's adding your navigation host to your main layout file and then just putting in the code itself for the back button and the code itself for where you want your buttons just to switch across from one destination to another or a crate all our straightforward process and definitely the navigation host uh, controllers the navigation components jetpacks navigation components are the future and are where you want to go so when you get the chance you, um, I would suggest stop using the uh, fragment managers and fragment translations and moving across to this new system anyway so that completes this tutorial tutorial if you want to keep getting notified of my tutorials don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell icon next to it will actually send you notifications of when i release a new video on youtube and um, please note i tend to respond to questions via paid consultancy at codement i will put a link above there i just just don't have any available time to respond to all the questions i get so i provide paid consultancy services for people who have, um, want help with their projects or if they've got any other issues they want me to help out with. Anyway, thank you for taking the time for watching this. Bye for now.